Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening. We are from group 14 and today we are presenting on the skin irritation test in vitro. Following are the objective of this test. First, to identify the hazard of irritant chemicals in accordance with the UN globally harmonized system of classification and labeling of chemicals, GHS category 2. Secondly, for regulatory classification and labeling of chemicals and mixtures. Next, to determine the skin irritancy of chemicals. And finally, to identify the non-classified chemicals. What is skin irritation? Skin irritation refers to the production of reversible damage to the skin occurring after exposure to a substance or a mixture following the application of a test chemical for up to 4 hours. Reconstructed human epidermis is a model that closely mimics the biochemical and physiological properties of the upper parts of the human skin. The epidermis. It uses human-derived non-transformed keratinocytes as cell source. How the test works? First, apply topically to a two-dimensional RHC model composed of non-transformed human-deprived epidermal keratinocytes which have been cultured to form a multi-layered, highly differentiated model of the human epidermis. Next, the RHE-based test methods measure the initiating events in the cascade, example, cell or tissue damage using cell viability as result. Last but not least, cell viability is measured by enzymatic conversion of the vital dye MTT, 3, 4, 5 dimethyl thiazole 2 yield, 2, 5 diphenyl tetrazolium bromide into a dark blue formazin salt. According to the test procedure, it is essential to perform variety measurement after a sufficient long post-treatment incubation period of the rinse tissue in a fresh medium. This is because it allows for both recovery from weak cytotoxic effects and for appearance of clear cytotoxic effects. It was found that a 42 hours post-treatment incubation period to be the most optimal during the test optimization. The following are the 3D organotypic in vitro models of human epidemies that are validated and accepted. They can be utilized in a variety of assays to evaluate the dermal irritation. The following is the general procedures for skin irritation toxicity testing. First, a minimum of three replicates are used for each control and test. Secondly, apply a sufficient amount of test chemicals to the epidemic surface. Note that this is applicable for both solid and liquid chemicals. Next, Moisten the surface of epidermis with distilled water for solid chemicals. If we are using powder, fine powder should be used. Then, expose the test chemicals for about 15 to 60 minutes under incubation temperature of 20 to 37 degrees Celsius. Wash off carefully the epidermis surface with aqueous buffer at the end of exposure period. And finally, perform a variety measurement in about 42 hours post-incubation treatment period. The illustration shows Epidom, one of the RHE model accepted by the OECD. Epidom is used as a standalone test method for skin irritation testing and skin corrosion testing. So for this slide, I would like to present on how the test result were interpreted and how it's translated. The test result can be measured by two methods, which can be used to calculate the cell viability. So before that, what is cell viability? Cell viability is a parameter measuring total activity of a cell population. For an example, an ability of mitochondrial dehydrogenase to reduce the vital dye MTT. So the first method, we can calculate the cell viability by using the optical density value on each chemical test. So as that is the first one. The second one, if you are using HPLC, UPLC spectrophotometry, or known as ultra-high performance liquid chromatography, we can calculate the cell viability using the percentage of MTT for Mazan peak area obtained with living tissues exposed to the test chemical relative to the MTT for Mazan peak obtained with the concurrent negative control which is set up to 100%. From the cut-off value of percentage cell viability that we obtain, we can distinguish either the test chemicals are irritant or non-classified. The cell viability data were interpreted and translated after 20 minutes exposure and 42 hours post-incubation. So if the viability measurement is 
50% or below, we can predict that the test chemical are irritant or category 2 UNGHS. While if the viability measurement is more than 50%, it can be classified as a non-irritant or non-classified test chemicals. So here is an example of case study which involved in two different substances of a skin irritation test. Substance A is a solid substance which applied as a powder topically on the epidermis, while substance B is a creamy substance which applied with brush onto the epidermis. So both substances are exposed in 20 minutes. From the graph shown in this slide, substance A has a measurement viability of 72%, which we discussed it earlier. If the substance has a viability measurement 50% or higher, we can be classified it as a non irritant test chemicals, while substance B has a 39% of cell viability measurement, which it can be predicted and classified as a Category 2 and irritant UNGSS. There are various advantages and limitations of this test. One of the advantages is, this test provides mechanically relevant measurement of cell viability in RHA tissues. Secondly, most of the test materials can be applied to the cultures in the same manner as it occurs in the in vivo testing. Thirdly, this test is more sensitive compared to the blood testing and it requires less waiting time. Typically, the results of this test may be obtained in 20 minutes to a day compared to a few days for blood tests. Next, skin testing is less expensive and allows physicians to select a wider range of allergens to be tested compared to blood testing. However, there are limitations to its tests, such as the test done is not uniform and universal as the standard operating procedure does not allow the classification of chemicals to the optional UNGHS Category 3. There is also no adequate information provided for the test, making it hard to obtain precise data. The test guideline recommends this test in supplement to TJ4040 on dermal irritation. However, it is noted that it covers the initial step of the inflammatory mechanism of action. This test also requires more than one testing to obtain a more precise data. The number of tests required are usually three testings.